Things couldn't be any more different for Call of Duty. This time last year, we were struggling with very little communication, very little in the way of information as to gameplay changes, and especially in the case of Warzone, it took entire months for even the most minor of changes to movement to be made, and then those changes were seemingly fairly vastly overestimated by the developers over at Infinity Ward. Flash forward to 2023, and not only do we have Sledgehammer Games outputting lots of patch notes explaining all of the various changes and fixes that they're looking to do, but we also have experimental playlists. I'm going to talk about this experimental playlist in more detail, but I also want to talk about some other stuff that they mentioned on a recent stream with Repulse, which was incredibly interesting to see. We've had Sledgehammer Games in the wild for the first time as developers, explaining the processes behind the changes they're making, why they're making them, and what they're looking to achieve. And all of this is looking really promising, not only for Modern Warfare 3 as a standalone title, but also for Warzone, which will be co-ran with Raven Software. Before I begin today's video, this video today is brought to you by Xbox. Right now, you can go out and get an Xbox Series X for £50 off in the United Kingdom, and on top of that, get a copy of Modern Warfare 3 included. Not only do you get a discounted console which can run the game at 120Hz of various resolutions, including 1440p and 4K, which is huge for first-person shooters, you also get a copy of the game to dive on into zombies and multiplayer and level up some of your weapons for the impending release of the new version of Warzone, which releases in Season 1. So check out a link in the description below. Now let's talk about this experimental playlist, because I think this is really cool. And we've seen this happen in other games such as Battlefield, which had the community test environment, and there are lots of other games these days which tend to run experimental versions of their own title. But what's really cool about how Call of Duty is doing this is that this is an experimental version of the game within the main game. You don't need to download a different version of Call of Duty. You don't need to do anything differently. You simply just play the experimental playlist as you would in game. And these are some really interesting changes that they're looking to pursue. The first one is around player visibility. In the experimental playlist, the outlines of enemy opponents have been drastically increased, making them brighter, more red, and a bit more visible compared to what you have in the base version of the game. This change is not finalized. They're simply waiting for feedback on how the visual improvements have improved the game or worsened the game, and if that's something that the community seems to enjoy, it is something they will implement in a future update. I've messed around with this and so far I will say it is a noticeably good improvement on player visibility. You still need to be aiming at your opponents for these outlines to be activated, but once they are, they are much more distinct, making shooting opponents a little bit more clearer, and it's something that I'm definitely a fan of. But it's really impressive to see this system inside the game, a system of temporary or partial changes that can then be implemented to the wider version of the game. And visibility is not where they're going to be ending with this. Now, recently, the Sledgehammer Games team had a full-blown interview with Repulse. Hector from Repulse Check is incredible and has a really deep understanding of not only Modern Warfare 3, but Warzone. And what struck me about this interview was how many things they were willing to say that they're looking to change. They said that the experimental playlist is to test out ideas and different things, but they're never a guarantee that they'll make it into the final game. And they will also be looking into testing out things like health regen fairly soon. But from this interview, it seems that pretty much any mechanic is up for grabs. Not only are they listening to feedback about the prestige system, but they've also said that they're looking into bringing back the bunny hopping that we've seen in previous Call of Duty, something that's been monumentally nerfed in the last few COD games. They also said that they're looking to add a visible stamina bar into the game as well. Now, you already have stamina in Call of Duty, and this mechanic is already in the game in terms of your attack sprint resetting and how often your character can do certain movements, but they're looking to physically make this visibly available to you so you can understand the resets and when you can break out into attack sprint. They also touched on weapon tuning and rebalancing, the fact that they're also hoping to achieve a fluid movement system within Modern Warfare 3, and even went as far to say that they are currently looking at aim assist. They said that they're happy with where aim assist is at the moment, but will be looking into feedback regarding aim assist. And this is such a dramatic departure from what we've seen under Infinity Ward, who seemingly felt like movement was a dirty word, weren't willing to seemingly talk about pretty much anything regarding changes to the game, changes to aim assist, or changes to core functionality, 
And on the flip side and inverse of that, we've got Sledgehammer Games who not only have a playlist to test out these changes, but have effectively said that anything can change if the audience deems that it's worth doing. They offered an example with Aim Assist where they said they might even look into reducing the options of Aim Assist from the three we have now simply to just one option, so that they can tune that option accordingly and make sure that it's balanced with other formats. Whilst I fully understand most of you will agree that we shouldn't be praising effectively what many of us would assume to be basic communication from development teams on video games, it feels like they're really going a step further this year. This is something that we haven't really seen from a COD studio in a long time. And it also feels as though Sledgehammer are willing to tear up the book if the book needs tearing up. And that is a really important thing for Call of Duty. Because these are the things that will generate quality of life changes, not only for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, but also for Warzone. So they've already touched on snaking, for example. Now, for those of you who don't know, snaking is the process of going prone and then tack sprinting, resulting in an up and down like movement that allows you to peek over desks and shelves at individual opponents. And this is a really big talking point in the Call of Duty League, because snaking is kind of viewed as this overly cheesy spammy strategy, which just means that people play head glitches and they just spam the snaking movement over and over again. And there's been a big outcry from the guys in CDL saying, look, this isn't something we want in the game for the league because it doesn't make sense for a competitive format. And it's something I personally agree with. I think snaking is a really stupid movement mechanic that doesn't require any skill whatsoever to do and ultimately just benefits the peeker's advantage approach from having the ability to play a head glitch over and over again. So unless you're planning on using lots of util to flush somebody out from that location, it basically means that snaking is unstoppable. And they've already said that they're looking into how they can resolve that issue, something that is a core talking point of their flagship CDL league, but also something that does affect a lot of general gameplay. Snaking is a quality of life issue in Call of Duty. Some people don't mind it too much, other people despise it, but from a competitive standpoint, it is something that is frowned upon. And already we've seen Sledgehammer Games say it's something they're looking into, but they're not currently committing to any hardcore changes, because they specifically said that they want the movement system to feel fluid and non-clunky, and they don't want any changes that they make so far, in terms of snaking and stopping snaking from occurring, to interfere with the fluidity that they're aiming for in a movement system. So not only do the developers have a clear idea in mind of how they want the game to feel, they also have a clear idea in mind of the fact that there are some things that do need addressing and some things that might require a couple of attempts at solutions. And this is what makes the experimental playlist so brilliant in my eyes, the idea that this experimental playlist could be used to allow multiple attempts for you to try a different solution over and over again. If one solution for snaking doesn't work, try a different one in week two. If week two is deemed better than week one, what could you do in week three to iterate on that? It's giving the developers a live environment to communicate not only with the players who play their game, but competitive players, direct community members, and it's giving them an opportunity to see these changes in the wild. One of my biggest issues with Call of Duty over the last few years is that it sometimes feels like they put out changes, but don't really appreciate the gravity of those changes once they get in the hands of the general player base. So when they balance something or when they change a core mechanic, they don't seem to understand at times how much those mechanics can be manipulated or abused, or how much the general player base is going to take that to an extreme. And this now gives them an option and idea to manipulate as many mechanics as they want in as many ways as they want, and hypothetically come out with the best solution. I'm a really big fan of this experimental playlist, and I was a really big fan of hearing Sledgehammer talk about some of their methods for what they're trying to achieve for the game, and I would highly recommend you check that out yourself. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about the experimental playlist and the changes that they've made so far, and are you generally happy with how Modern Warfare 3 feels? As always folks, thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this leave a like, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.